Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor and today we're going to be looking at how to fix carvings that have gotten messed up somehow. Either split or broke or you sanded off too much of a particular area. I'm going to show you how to fix them. I've got a whole box full of them. We'll take a look at those and we're going to take a look at how to fix them. So come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. So here's my box of either unfinished carvings or carvings that need some sort of repair. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here's a couple of blanks that I cut out. I usually always cut out more than one blank. If I'm going to do a blank, usually I'm doing two or three at a time. And you can see these are the same blank, but different... I've treated it different in in the carving style that I, I did. And <clears throat> this one, I wasn't really happy with the beak. And so I moved on to this one. I just left more on it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is a falcon that I was doing here. And I didn't have quite good enough reference. So that project came to a halt. But I didn't throw this away because I can always come back and repair with uh, some of the tricks I'm about to show you. So this is a Carolina Wren. And here's the blank for it. And basically what I was running into is this is pine. It's sugar pine, which is a, a pretty nice pine to carve. But the issues with it is, let me get up close here, and you can see those growth rings. The dark part of those growth rings is hard. And in between it is soft wood. So you can really, if you're carving across it, you can actually feel the like chatter. Uh, with your knife as you hit these hard growth rings. Um, in finishing it, detailing it, like burning it, uh, often those lines will still show up. So I was working on a stylized one at the time, which would be fine because you could sand it and smooth it and um, but I think these are going to end up solid paint without too much detail. So this is an eagle that I was making. And you can see this is the eagle that I actually finished. But this is the one that I started on at first. And you can see the head quite isn't big enough. I took off too much up here in this ridge. And I wanted the... I wanted that stern look like rafters often have here and I took off too much in that brow line so what I will do is use some of the tricks I have here and I'll show you how to how to make it better how to make it work now you wouldn't um, I wouldn't go as far as to compete with something that I did a repair to to the average person, it would not be noticeable. It would be perfectly fine to give something like that as a gift. Now here are those lines, those grain lines in the pine. I hope the camera can catch that. But you can actually see the uh, lines here of the grain of the wood through the detailing and the paint. It's the uh, growth rings. I can see them all through here in a competition that would never fly, but this was done back in 87. So that's pretty early on in my carving career. So a lot of problems in carvings where you take off too much is usually associated with reading the grain properly. 
a good rule that I learned a long time ago was was carve downhill and you'll carve with the grain. Never try to carve uphill or into a hill or you'll have a split. That is a split. It just it's not a cut at all. If you can see into this, you can see the grain of the wood completely and it's it's not cut, it's not polished. The very beginning of it, maybe a little bit of a cut, but everything else is a split. When you have a split like this, you can glue it back together with a little bit of wood glue. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we got some wood glue. I just have regular type on. Any kind of wood glue is, is fine. It's really considered a PVA, a polyvinyl acetate glue. And, and you don't want to get too much on there and you only want it on one side. I don't want it too slippery. I want it a little bit on the tacky or, or uh, a little bit on the tacky side. Just enough to kind of get in there, let it sit for a couple of uh, seconds. And you want to put your piece of wood back on there. And it, it won't be perfect fit, but you give it just a little bit of a, a push and a pull. And it's Starting to come back, you see there. It's setting already. By, by not putting too much glue on it, if you put too much glue on both sides, it's gonna be very slippery and it's just gonna go slip sliding away. But by doing it like this, we have a nice smooth area here and you could use just the smallest bit of wood filler in this little crack right here. I can about get my fingernail down in there. So either plastic wood, um, a little bit of wood glue and some sawdust in there, and you could sand this, and it would be a paintable piece. Now, you wouldn't be able to stain it unless you got really good at this technique. If the piece is bigger, you take it and you rub it back and forth in the direction of the grain until it starts to really want to grab and stick. This one did it really quickly. Uh, but that's, you can run your finger over it. You can't feel it at all. Everything lines up perfectly. All that grain went right back in line. That's a good fix. All right, one form of two-part epoxy is this quick wood. It comes in two parts. You cut off a little piece, and there's the hardener inside and then the resin on the outside. You mix them together, and you can apply it. And as you can see, that's the easy repair. It won't shrink. You can carve it. You can use a rotary tool. It dries very quickly. So you have to work quick if you're going to use it. You can smooth it out with a little water on your finger. It is an option. Bondo, auto body repair, or the all-purpose putty, they're basically the same, made by the company Bondo. If you're going to use that, you want to go to work on it while it's setting. It, it starts off very... Uh, not in a liquid form, but more like a putty. And as it dries and hardens, it actually gets warm. When it's in its warm state and firm, you want to do most of your work with that. You can carve it with an X-Acto knife. I use one of these. This is uh, by Stanley. And these are available at your big box store. 
and they remove a lot of this very quickly. I've used it for large signs too, and it works beautifully. Actually, will outlive wood because it's rot resistant. We got Magic Sculpt, which is a two-part resin epoxy. And this is my preferred way now. I've just got this in the past year, and it's absolutely wonderful. It works good with the carvings, holds really good to wood. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways now of repairing. Also making um, the toenails for like a, a little owl or something like that. His toenails are resin epoxy. All right, so here's another carving that I did. It's pine, sugar pine. And the problem that occurred with this one is that I did not line the eyes up properly when I made them. And so a trick that I learned for lining up eyes is to first, you know, use a pattern and, and place the eyes right or you use a pair of dividers and you come back from the beak to the center of the eye. The beak is part of the skull, so the beak doesn't change. So you would go from the tip of the beak to the center of the eye and you would make a straight hole in using a Jimmy DeResta ice pick, straight in or an awl or, or whatever you're using. You wanna go straight in and make a small hole. And then with that hole there, you want to take some toothpicks and to be able to line the eyes up so they look like that th this is one stick going straight across. If it's, if it's not, then you know you don't have your eyes on the same plane. And then you want to be able to flip the bird over like so. And you want that plane to be even this way. If it is, then you can use that little hole as your guide for your drill bit to go in and create the proper size hole for the eye. And what I usually do is slightly bigger than the dimension of the eye. So I believe a, a black cap chickadee is six millimeter. I would drill slightly bigger just so the uh, two part putty that I use has the ability to squeeze out from around it to form the eyelid. It's a nice little trick. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to use the Bondo. Now this beaks bird is entirely too tiny for its sides of its body. So what I'm gonna do is use this all-purpose all putty. Uh, by the way, get you one of these. They're less than a dollar. They're made for opening cans that are sealed like paint cans and such. Don't use a screwdriver. Uh, you'll just mess up the can and then the next time you use it, it'll just be difficult. So these things with the red and gold, literally. So I'm going to just take a little bit of this putty and put here, and you can see it. It has a strong odor to it, so you want to seal it right back up. It comes with a cream hardener, so it's a two-part, and you want to use just a little bit. The more you use, the quicker it'll dry, and you want to allow yourself some time to work it, but you do want to mix this thoroughly. Now as it dries, if you're still mixing when it starts to dry, you'll, you'll feel it start to stiffen up. And if you're not ready to put it on just right then, um, just mix up another batch. Once it starts to harden, it hardens really quick. It's sandable and carvable in 15 minutes. So you're just going to cover the whole area. 
Ash it down into the wood. You'll be taking most of it off. trick is you don't want any air bubbles in it. I can already feel it starting to stiffen up. It's still, still pliable. It'll get to the point where it starts to be crumbly, and that's pretty much when it's hardened too much to really use, and it's starting to get there now. It's starting to get crumbly, and yeah, if it, if it starts to get crumbly like that, and you haven't got it on the bird yet, just mix up another batch. It's pretty cheap stuff. And uh, give yourself some time once it's on there. It, it's not going to come off on you now. That's starting to set. And just now starting to get warm. You can still form it with your hands a little bit. Just by giving a light squeeze. And once it dries and cures a little bit more, uh, you gently take a, something like an X-Acto knife. I would use an X-Acto knife blade specifically because um, when you're done with this, you'll probably want to throw it away. But that's another way to fix a small beak or other area that you've taken too much wood off of. All right, so let's take a look at some plastic wood now. Plastic wood, because of the acetone base, dries up very quickly, so you do not want to leave this lid open very long. And you'll see it start to, once you isolate some of it like this, it'll, it's already starting to go through the drying process. You want to seal it good, tap it just around the outer perimeter like this with, with a little hammer and you store it upside down like this, keeps it from drying out. You want to take a little bit of mineral oil and not much, just a little bit and that will, there's two drops, two good drops. That will slow down the drying time of that. And we'll go with a little bit of acetone to thin it out. As you can see the surface is already starting to dry there. The surface of the, whoo, it is strong smelling. So we'll mix that up, get it over there into the oil. By the way, this is a foam plate and the acetone will eat right through it. You can see, use paper plate instead. But you can see it's drying already. This is just a little sculpture tool can use anything that's not plastic because the acetone will eat the plastic. And you can put this on uh, in abundance because it sands so easy, it's not an issue. So we 
got it on there. I'm gonna go with the acetone again. You gotta kind of move quickly with this stuff because it dries so fast. And you can brush it out a little bit, brush it right into the fibers of the wood. Keeping this area wet. Now you see it's starting to get wet again and you can start to kind of shape it. You just move it around with the paintbrush like you like. Now, just a word of caution, acetone is bad for your lungs. So try not to inhale it. Use proper ventilation. Follow the directions. There you go. And the plastic wood just, with your fingernail, it just comes right off any kind of steel tool or you make a, a handmade copper wire tool. It just, you just scrape it off with your thumb and it comes right off. All right, so it's been a few minutes. This has had a chance to warm and cool back down. So the that process is done and I'm going to show you how with an exacto knife how easy this carves like butter but it will continue to cure overnight now once it gets hard uh, doesn't carve anywhere near this nice. So this is this is the stage to carve it. And if you want to wait for it to uh, get real hard before you sand it, you can do that. But as you can see, it carves like a bar of soap. Now, if you have any air holes, this looks like this was an air hole, and it might actually go into the beak here. There is a, a glazing putty that you can use to put over that. It's usually in a, a red or a amber color. Or just mix up a little bit more, and you put it there, fill in that little hole, that little air gap right, right there. Can you see it? Right here. You can fill that in and then recarve it and and you'll have a solid beak to work with. Now the magic sculpt, I already have a video on it, so check out the video that I have called Magic Sculpt. And like I say, this is my favorite way of working. Uh, very low odor, very easy to work with. It sculpts, you can carve it, drill it. Uh, you want to uh, you can put a little less hardener in it and it'll give you more working time or if you're in a hurry you can add more hardener it gives you a lot of options this is great stuff to work with 
Hopefully this video was useful. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.